So this is not what you expected, right? What is this? Yet another talk? So a couple of meetups ago, um, we decided to always start with a beginner's topic. Uh, we don't want to scare away the beginners if it's always complicated stuff. So this is something we try out. You can give us feedback later. Um, perhaps it's okay. Perhaps you like it. Perhaps you feel uh, this is a waste of time. Please give us feedback. But on the bright side, you paid for two, but you get two and a half talks. This is great, isn't it? So today we are talking about initializer lists. So let's start with a question to you. So does this compile this little piece of code? Yes. So who says, yeah, of course it does. Oh no, unfortunately it doesn't. <laughs> this doesn't compile. This is one of the few places probably where decal type actually doesn't give you a type, which means this initializer list doesn't have a type. That's strange. Okay, let's try it differently. Let's use auto instead. So, does this code compile? No, missing header. Missing header. Um, okay, everything else aside, of course, the, the prerequisites are okay. Also, doesn't compile. The compiler apparently doesn't know what this, the type of this little thing is. Strange. Okay, let's change it again because we remember that far so way way back in the C plus plus ninety eight times or even C times you could do something like this. So a static array of integers. Okay. So it, it, it is static of course. So this of course compiles. Which means now let's change it back to this auto. What about this? Ah, this is what you might have seen. This is what actually compiles. But interestingly this is a special case. Okay, let's first take a look at this here. So as we said, this compiles, then what does this print? So now I can use decal type on this list. Okay, it works. I can print the type of it. What does it print? Of int. So it indeed prints initialize a list of int, not int array, which is good. Okay. So initialize a list is in fact a lightweight proxy for a static built-in array. So it's tightly linked. They don't always come in two. If you have an initializer list, there's also always a static array. If you create an initializer list, you also the compiler does it for you, you also automatically create such a um, static array. And there's exactly three occurrences where you can properly use an initializer list. So first, so and I'm quoting from um, CPP reference. A braced init list is used to list initialize an object with a corresponding constructor accepts a standard initialized list parameter. So this here compiles if T has a constructor which um, accepts an initialize a list. Of course, this could also mean that I'm, construct so I'm calling constructor with three arguments, but as soon as T has a constructor with an initialized list parameter, this creates an initialize a list including the according static array of size three. So this is called direct list initialization. Then the second occurrence is if you use a braced in init list, to, uh, a braced init list is used as the right operand of assignment or as a function call argument. And the corresponding assignment operator function accepts a standard initializer list parameter. So this form with the equal sign, copy list initialization. Also, the compiler creates an array for you an initializer list is basically the stand-in for this array. All right, so note this little asterisk here. This is kind of the, the strange thing that a lot of people probably um, trip over at least once. So there was a paper, the N2640. This paper suggested that this should be possible, that I should be able to write, oh, basically it's this form here, this form, um, that this should be possible now the third form, a braced init list, is bound to auto, including, including in a ranged for loop. Um, this paper said, okay, this should be possible. Now, many people feel, oh, this is, this is strange, um, because auto is now an init list. Um, and in C++17, this was changed again. So there's another paper which now makes this an initializer list. If you have only one element, suddenly it's an int, not an init list of int. 
But okay, this is a special case. Else, just remember, this is exactly the three places where you have an initializer list. Everything else is something else. Okay, and of course, this can create ambiguities of some sort. So this is probably the most infamous example. Standard vector got a constructor that takes an initializer list. So you can, for instance, create a standard vector using parentheses with two arguments. So size t's. What does this result in? Well, three values, uh, three times the value five. So the standard vector has the size three. All the values are initialized with five. If, however, the same arguments you use parentheses, then suddenly it's an initializer list, which means now it has the size two, and you have the values three and five, which are the, the elements of the initializer list. This is why people basically don't like them so much, because now there is confusion between these two things. You just have to take a close look at which kinds of parentheses braces are used. Um, very important, this one is the one that is always called, so that the initializer list version is always called if you use braces. So initializer lists have priority to some extent. Huh? This is always uh, an initializer list. This, of course, is, is a usual constructor call. It's just something to keep in mind. All right, so, but you're experts, right? So, this is a little more tricky question. Does this code compile? I have a class S, which has a proper constructor with an initializer list of ints, again. And I even have begin and end, which allow me to traverse the initializer list, which is basically the two functions that an initializer provides. I'm storing the initializer list internally, so I remember it, which you can do, it's copyable, yeah, just note that I copy it right here also. I create an S by means of an initializer list, and then I traverse S. So just print out all the values. Does this compile? Okay, so who feels? Yeah, of course. I'm using it to create this S. So, it compiles. The interesting question is, however, does it work? Oh, this is a very, very good point. Dangling reference. He's right. There is a lurking problem in this, um, in this line of code because with this initializer list comes a static array. And how long does this array live? Well, it lives exactly as long as this statement here. I can copy the initializer list around, no problem. It's, it's very lightweight. It's either two pointers or a pointer in the size. But the array, and therefore whatever is referenced by this initializer, is, is gone uh, at the end of the statement. Meaning, if, if I'm lucky, it's actually printing what, what I expect. But it's not, not proper code, of course. So, remember, the lifetime of the underlying array is the same as any other temporary object, except that initializing initialize, initialize a list object from the array extends the lifetime of the array exactly like binding a reference to a temporary. So if you're wondering about the last thing, like binding a reference to a temporary, um, this is the, the C++ most important const. Yeah? You return a temporary, you bind it to a const reference, the lifetime is extended. Thus, um, yeah. Basically, similar thing here. All right. So, last question for the experts among you, and afterwards, you are warmed up to to see the, the talk, uh, the next talk. Does this code compile? Copyable types. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so he might have given you a hint, copyable types, but of course we want to dig deeper. Who feels actually this is a nice way to create a vector of unique pointers? And after all, a vector can hold unique pointers, right? So who feels this is compiling? Okay, who feels it's not compiling? More people, then you have to find me the right explanation. You are right, it does not compile, why? And why does it copy the arguments? There's a very simple reason. Uh, 
So what is the what is the type of the array that is behind this initializer list? It's a const whatever array, const t. In this case, I would have const unique pointers. I cannot move from them. And so this does not compile because I cannot move from them. Yeah? Const is not movable. That's basically that the problem that you have here. All right. So this was the five minute lightning talk in the beginning. And I would just pass over to our first 45 minutes talk. Okay, if it's 50, it's okay. <laughs>